Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at end effectors for biped characters, or characters with two limbs. In part two we'll talk about quadruped characters, but for now we're going to talk about the biped characters. And this is the first tutorial. We'll talk about the 2D motion key editor, the UI involved, and a little bit about end effector constraints as well. Okay, so let's bring in our actor first, uh, right off the bat here. Let's go over to actor, to characters, uh, to G3 and G3 human. I'm going to bring in athletic Tim underscore S or side facing Tim at 45 degrees here. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is load up our motion key editor. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go over here to the 2D motion key editor. Again, you can also use the T, uh, T hot key and let's just zoom in on our character a little bit. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that there is an image view and a hierarchy view on the top here. We can uh, toggle between the two, just like this. You can select the bones in your image view just by clicking on these little points here. Okay, and if you mouse over them, the name of the bone will come up, like right hand or a hip, for example, down here. Okay, or a head up here. You can also select the bones from the uh, viewport here as well. So go to torso, left arm, okay, so on and so forth. Just select the bones from here as well. In the hierarchy view, you can select the bones by, you know, selecting them uh, on the list here. So like hip, torso, neck, and you can twirl these up, you can twirl them down, um, you can collapse whatever you want, um, or just like, just like this. Um, in addition, you also have the option to go over here and collapse the entire thing. You can twirl it down uh, one by one, and you can also just go to list view, and list view will have all of the uh, bones listed just like this, okay? And you can also collapse the list view as well if you want, all right? Pretty fun stuff. Now we're not going to really deal with the hierarchy view here. Um, the only thing I wanted to point out here is that we have the option to lock uh, the end effectors or enable the end effectors in hierarchy view as well. You can see the right hand and right hand numb have locks here, which we can enable or disable. We'll talk more about that a little bit here. But just because uh, the image view is a bit more intuitive and it's our new view here, we're going to be using the image view for the duration of this tutorial. Okay. So you can see in the image view, we also have the option to, uh, there's a, these locks on the feet. Okay. So these are called end effectors. And you can see that the two bones on the feet here are red. That means the end effectors are active. You can see left leg lock and right leg lock. We can enable or disable them just by clicking on them. Okay. We'll talk about exactly what those do in just a moment. Okay. We can also do the ones on the hands as well. All right. Uh, easy enough. Now, you can only do this if you have constraints active, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. Let's go over here to our bone type, though, bone display. All right, we're going to click bone display. You can show or hide your bones if you want. You don't have to have them. If you have them hidden, you can also select them from the uh, uh, reference image here, okay? And you can rotate them and move them and do whatever you want. I'm just going to press reset for now. Uh, you can also change the color of your bones once they're shown, just like this. Uh, go to like blue, for example, all right? If you think that's easier to see, probably not. You can probably go to red. That might be a bit more of a contrast to the blue. But uh, I like to stick with the good old uh, yellow. All right. Very easy to see. Okay. And you can also change the size of the bones too. If you want them to be easier to select, you can increase the size to like 80. And then they get big and fat in the viewport here. And you can select them like this. Okay. You can change the size to like 20. Make them small and thin so you can focus more on your character's uh, sprites. Uh, I'm just going to keep it at the default 40 size. Okay. And you can also change the opacity all the way from like one to a hundred. You can change it down to like 20. So you can barely see those bones and you can, you know, bring it up one by one as well. I'm just going to leave it at 100. Good stuff. Now you can see right now we have constraints enabled. Let's deactivate constraints for a sec. And you'll notice when we, when we deactivate constraints, all these locks are going to become grayed out, which means you can't, uh, you, we don't have any, any option for end effectors to be enabled. And I can select my character's hip. I can move my character around like this. Okay, freely. I'm just going to control Z and undo that. And you can also just, uh, you can use the rotate and rotate your character. Wee, like this. Okay. And you can also scale your character. You can, uh, if you scale the hips, it'll scale all the bones simultaneously. Okay. I'll just control Z and undo that. And you can press reset to bring your character back to the default uh, position. Okay, so uh, once we have constraints off, you can do all that stuff. You can scale individual bones as well. Do the same thing for individual bones. Like this, for example, uh, you can move it. When you move it, it'll, it'll stretch the parent bone, just like this. Okay, and you can also scale it to make your hand like larger if you want to have like a big fist or something during a fight. And then, of course, you can just reset it back to normal. Okay, so this is with constraints off. You have the ability to uh, rotate, translate, and scale. Uh, when your constraints are on, 
you basically have the same abilities except for scale. So I can rotate just like I did before. Okay. I can move just like I did before. But when I move, notice I can't stretch it anymore unless we have stretch bone active. And we'll talk about stretch bone in a moment. Okay. So let's just go back and reset our character there. Uh, so when you have constraints, suddenly all these different options become available. You can see the various hotkeys, hotkey 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for reverse joint angle. We're going to go through all of these constraints and talk about how you can use them all. All right, so let's first take a look at uh, end effectors. Um, we're going to go ahead and lock our character's feet by selecting these lock buttons here, lock icons. And you can see that the um, little points here become red. The bones, the right foot bone and the left foot bone will become red there. And what that means is now if we take our character's hip, we can move our character down like this, his hips, and the feet will become locked. And that means the end effectors on the feet are enabled. An end effector is a static motion reference point uh, generated on a specific uh, bone on a G3 actor. Now these uh, end effectors cannot be edited. They can only be edited on free bone characters. And we'll talk about that in other tutorials. Okay, so right now we only have for the hands and for the feet. So I can move my character around like this. And if I want, I can also enable the bone, uh, the end effector on the right hand. And when we do that, you can see it creates that static reference point. And as long as our character is in a physical, a position where he's physically able to, his hands will be locked, his hands and feet will be locked in position. If you move them way too far, you can see the hand will actually lose its position because uh, we don't have stretch bone enabled. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Okay, so just like this. Whee. Okay, we're going to have our character do like a DJ spinning move like this. He's bouncing and spinning a turntable or something. Anyways, let's just go ahead and press reset. And I'm going to uh, disable my end effector on the right hand. So let's take a look first at end effector rotation or the one hotkey. Okay, I'm going to enable this right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, actually disable it first. I'm going to bring my character's, uh, select his left, uh, right foot bone here and just bring it up like this. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just bring this over a little bit so I'm a bit more centered here. Uh, and you can see here we have end effector rotation. So if I select my character's uh, right foot bone, for example, I can rotate it like this. Okay. However, if I use the, uh, the move, uh, my move cursor, which is, uh, shown right here. Okay. Then when I move my, uh, that bone, it'll move the entire foot just like this. Okay. So we can rotate it this way or we can move it this way. But notice when I rotate it this way, it rotates, uh, you know, the entire foot, the entire, um, child bone as well. All right. So what, what we can do is we can actually take this and we can actually enable the end effector rotation. All right. So once we enable end effector rotation, you'll see that the bones on the hands and the feet will become pink. The end effectors will become pink. And now if we move this um, bone right here, now it's going to kind of just rotate. It's going to rotate that end effector. All right. You can just move it along like this and you can create kind of weird, uh, cool looking uh, movements like this. Okay. So I can press the one hotkey to uh, turn it off. Okay. When I turn it off, I can move it like this. And if I press the one hotkey again, I'm going to move it like this. Okay. So that's end effector rotation. We can do the same thing for the hands as well. If I press the one hotkey and let's just, uh, make this, uh, lock this right hand here and I select the uh, right hand. If I move it, it's going to move my entire arm like this. Okay. However, let's just control Z that. If I have, if I press the one hotkey, then if I move it, it's just going to move the uh, bone like this. Okay. We can do kind of like a wave with the hands. Okay. Woo, like that. All right, so that's really, uh, that's end effector rotation in a nutshell. It just allows you to rotate those uh, um, bones, end effector bones individually. Uh, I can press one, move it up like this, press one again, and move it like this, okay? Move the wrist and get a, get a result like that. So that's end effector rotation, okay? Uh, pretty simple stuff. Let's reset this character's position, and let's disable end effector rotation. I'm going to bring my character's foot up one more time. Okay? And just like this. Now, say for example, we have, you know, uh, we rotate our character's ankle to a position like this, and we want to like move it back and forth, but we want to keep the ankle's angle like this, okay? We want the uh, angle to remain like this at a 45 degree angle. And we can, so you notice if I move it like this, it's going to change the rotation of that end effector, okay? It's going to go from like, you know, basically zero degrees here to 45 to 90, okay? Just like this. Now, if I wanted it to remain at that 45 degree angle, uh, regardless of where I position it, 
Then I can select Keep and Effector Angle, or use the 2 hotkey. And when I do that, notice that it will re retain that 45 degree angle, regardless of whether I move it, or where I move it, okay? Now this is pretty useful for, uh, for quadruped characters in certain situations, and biped characters as well, okay? If you want to do like, you know, cool dance moves, it's a lot easier to use uh, this kind of um, end effector, keep end effector angle in uh, various in various situations. If we take the uh, the hand, for example, same thing, okay? You'll see that it'll retain that 45 degree angle, regardless of whether where I move it. Okay, that's uh, keep end effector angle. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, reset now and disable that one. The next uh, constraint we want to talk about is stretch bone. Okay, now for stretch bone, um, you notice that you remember that when I turn constraints off, I was able to kind of stretch my bone like this by clicking and dragging. I'm just going to control Z that. Uh, however, if I, if I have constraints on, I'm not going to be able to do that. If I move my hand, it's going to, you know, maintain that position close to my body. All right. Now, if you have stretch bone on, that kind of allows you with a constraint on to also stretch your bone. Okay. So you can use this in combination with other end effectors as well. Um, so if I stretch it out, like I can do like this, it'll stretch all the parent bones, okay, just like this. We can stretch our character's hand way out like that. And the same thing goes for the uh, for the feet as well. If I select the right foot, I can stretch them out like this. It's like, you can have like a really long uh, leg stretch, okay? Um, so that's really stretch bone. That's a stretch bone in a nutshell. Again, the three hotkey, um, fairly simple stuff. Let's reset the stretch bone. And keep bend direction is another one here. Okay, so the next uh, constraint we're going to talk about is keep bend direction. Okay, I'm going to disable my stretch bone right now. So if I select my character's hip and I just, you know, move my character uh, down like this, you can see the uh, the feet end effectors are, you know, active. And we can, depends on how we approach uh, position, we can make our character's legs kind of like bend backwards or bend in different ways and uh, just like this. And you can see they'll bend backwards like that, like a it's like a bird or a terror chicken or something like that. And obviously, in some cases, you wouldn't want that kind of result. So what you want to do is you can bring your character to a position, position like this where you want to maintain this uh, bend direction. And you can just go ahead and select Keep Bend Direction. And when you do so, then your character will always bend, his legs will always bend in that direction regardless of how you approach it. So no matter which angle I approach from, his legs are always going to bend in that direction. Okay? So that maintains the bend direction of your character's knees, and any bend, any uh, bends that you're that are on your character's bones will be maintained as well. Not only just the uh, the legs, okay, but the legs were the only ones that we had bent at that time. So that's a uh, keep bend direction, okay. Let's just go ahead and reset our character back again, and let's disable that. Now, if we have our character, uh, let's go. Let's take for example the arms this time, just like this. Okay, we're going to rotate the arm up like that, and rotate up like this as well. And notice that uh, we have this option for reverse joint angle. Now, if I do that, my character is going to, you know, that bone that I have selected, that joint angle is going to flip, basically. All right? We can do the same thing for this one as well. If we select the left forearm, reverse joint angle, we can have him do kind of some weird pose like this if we want. All right? And the same thing goes with the feet. All right? So if we take the left foot, or that, the legs rather, if we take the left foot, uh, we select the uh, left shank, we reverse the joint angle, you can have him some kind of weird disjointed position, like he's just been mangled or something. All right, so that's basically reverse joint angle. Uh, fairly simple. And if you want, you can create an animation with reverse joint angle as well. Let's go ahead and take our hip uh, for our character. Let's bend him over like this. And uh, I'm just going to go to frame 10, just like this. Enter in frame 10 in the timeline there. And I'm going to select my uh, uh, shank there, my left shank and right shank otherwise known as the calf bones, and you can reverse joint angle like this for this one, and select this one, do the same thing. Okay, and you can also use the 5 hotkey. And when I do that, I can move my character back and forth in the timeline. You can have like this kind of weird, you know, back and forth uh, leg dance like this, okay? Kind of a goofy dance, but uh, anyways, that's how you can animate reverse joint angle as well. Okay, so I think that's really all I wanted to cover in this tutorial on end effectors for biped characters. Um, you can find a lot of useful scenarios to use those in. Um, just, you know, a very powerful and, uh, and uh, intuitive tool that allows you to uh, more control over your character's position using Smart IK. Um, end effectors are really useful in a variety of situations. All right, so make sure you check out our uh, tutorial on quadruped characters, uh, end effectors for quadruped characters, and check out our other videos on our YouTube channel as well. And not to mention our forums at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.